thing. All right. All right, so once again, we're on page 364 and 365 of our textbooks. And let me exit a couple things out here because my computer's running a bit slow. I've got too many, too many tabs open at one time. Okay. All right, so you already know what a theme is. We've talked about it multiple times. So I don't need to go over the definition with that with you again. But one thing I do want to talk about when it comes to theme is how themes in a story are often universal. Now, if I say that a theme is universal, what do I mean when I say that? Who thinks? Who knows what I mean when I say that a theme is universal or universal? F.A.? That it usually a main idea of most stories. Well, the you're close. You're very close. Not quite main idea, not in most stories, but you're very close. John Austin. What? Uh, not closer, but not quite there yet. Henry? Even closer, right. It can be applied to almost any situation. Okay, however, it's not just about situation. It's about all time. If a theme is universal in a story, that means that it's going to be whatever theme, if somebody reads this story we're going to read right now, or probably next week, 500 years from now, they come across a copy of this story 500 years from now. The themes in this story are going to still be applicable to whatever human is reading them then. Let me give you a great example. William Shakespeare. Now, we haven't read any Shakespeare in here yet. We're not going to until 8th grade. Okay, we don't start Shakespeare until 8th grade. But Ben Johnson, who was a student of Shakespeare's, Ben Johnson... Student of Shakespeare's, after Shakespeare died, he wrote a epic poem in memory of Shakespeare. And one of the things that he says is that he was not for an age, but for all time. He says Shakespeare was not for an age, but for all time. Which means that the concepts, the themes, the type of things that Shakespeare wrote about in his plays are universal themes. You can pick up one of his plays and read it and connect to the characters in some form or fashion. The things that they go through, the events that they witness, they're all connected to the same kind of issues and thoughts and problems and concerns and mistakes and victories that we deal with today. Now, of course, of course, the setting and the language and the standards and the obligations and all the socially constructed things of that time, of course, they're different. Of course they're different. They're 500, 600 years ago, right? So there are certain aspects about Shakespeare's writing that we may not relate to today, but the true depth of what he was trying to tell us, his themes that he was putting into his plays, the messages he was trying to relate to us, they're still perfectly applicable today as they were 500 years ago. Let me give you an example. Has anyone in here ever felt betrayed by somebody? Raise your hand if you've ever felt betrayed by somebody. All right, well, that's Othello. One of Shakespeare's most famous plays, Othello. Um, has anyone, have you ever had a parent or a guardian um, dislike or distrust a friend or boyfriend or girlfriend of yours? Raise your hand. We don't even have boyfriends. Whatever. I mean, friends. friends, whatever. Some of you do, some of you don't. You're a little young for it, but still. Right? Well, that's Romeo and Juliet. Uh, has anybody ever felt like they, um, this one's a bit of a personal question, so don't raise your hand if you don't want to, but for those of you who are like me and your parents are split up, does any, has anyone ever felt a sense of detachment or animosity to a step-parent? That's Hamlet, all right? Um, has anybody ever allowed their desire to achieve something cause them to act in a way that is selfish? Or in a way that is rude or mean to somebody else. Well, that's Macbeth. Okay? Okay? Has anyone ever had a crush on somebody that one of your friends had a crush on too? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> that's most of Shakespeare's comedies. Most of his comedies deal with those kind of little things. But the point is, is that Shakespeare wrote these plays... Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, back in the 1500s, right? And yet the things that they are about, if you can understand and decipher the language, the themes, 
are things that you are dealing with today. So that's the beautiful thing about literature. And that's why I love literature so much is because it doesn't matter when a story was written. Yes, there are always going to be aspects of a story that are a little bit difficult to grasp because of time and place. Certain uses of language, certain standards, certain things that people would have done back then that we don't do today. Those things are different and sometimes it's hard to grasp them. But the themes, the messages, the under, underlying ethical and moral um, comments that the writer is making are usually universal. We can pick up any piece of literature from any time, and we can read it, and we can gain something from it. Beowulf. Has anyone ever heard the term Beowulf? Have anyone ever heard that before? You've heard it. I'm sure you know. Beowulf is a, um, one of the oldest surviving pieces of English literature in existence. Beowulf is thousands of years old. Thousands. Okay? What? Uh, yes. Beowulf uh, might actually be... Uh, by, by, well, the Bible was canonized in the 300s, and Beowulf was written a couple hundred years later. Uh, but the Bible would not necessarily be considered English literature. It'd be, well, it'd be, well, I mean, multiple things. It's, just, it's more world literature than anything else. But English literature, right? Literature written in the English, well, I say English language. Beowulf was actually written in Old English and probably Latin in its original form. But regardless, the English language written by English-speaking people, one of the oldest surviving pieces of English literature is um, Beowulf. And Beowulf, if you read Beowulf, do you want to know what it is? It's basically the plot to every superhero movie you've ever watched in your entire life. All of the same themes, all of the same actions, the same things that Be Beowulf goes through are applicable to all of those Marvel movies that we watch, any superhero movie, the things that they talk about in Beowulf thousands of years ago about courage and heroism and fighting evil and being good and virtuous and all these things are still applicable and important today. So that's something I want you to understand about theme and something I want you to understand about literature in general. When we talk about literature, when we talk about why this stuff is so important, again, guys, the whole purpose of it is not just so that you can, I mean, yes, learning how to read and be literate is important. Learning how to identify a main idea is important, okay? Learning the vocabulary that stuff is important, but ultimately the reason that you read is because literature connects you to the rest of humanity. Every piece of literature you read tells you something about the human condition of the human spirit, and every piece of literature you read is written by someone who poured a little bit of themselves into it, okay? So that's why we read all this stuff. That's why it's all so important, right? Because it's about us as humans, about learning more about ourselves, about our fellow man, about the connections that we have. That's why theme is so important. Everybody with me? All right. So let's go back to 364 and 365, and we're just going to go over these things just a little bit, um, just to remind ourselves everything, right? So again, remember that most themes are universal. I'm at the bottom of page 364, which means they appeal to people across cultures and from different time periods, okay? Yes? Don't you mean a real? As you read, connect the experiences of the characters to your own life experiences. So we've done this, um, we've done this uh, with a lot of our other things. Uh, but as you read, you need to connect the experience of the characters to your own life experience. Now we've been doing that throughout the entire year. We did that with Max Comedy, but keep keep um, that in mind. So let's do another little exercise. Uh, look on page three sixty five. Colin, would you like to read this one? Read us about the, uh, it was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful day, the fifth of my life. After two restless hours, Zoe's belly was tired. Zoe was determined to catch the fish. She sat quietly by the river in front of the house. Then she moved upstream a bit. Another hour had passed. Suddenly, Zoe felt a strong pull. She fought the fish for several minutes and then nearly went off into the sea. She had caught a real fish. Great. All right. So look at the little boxes below that. Her qualities are that she's patient and that she's determined, right? When everyone else gave up and got tired of waiting, she decided to stick around and wait. She was patient. Her actions um, are based off of her qualities. Because she's patient and because she is determined, she stays after her brothers leave. It's those qualities that feed her actions, and that's another thing to remember. Your character qualities and your character actions are always going to be connected. 
how they respond to conflict is usually directly tied to their qualities, their characteristics, okay? Which is why you might have a character who is, whose characteristics are hot-headed and ill-tempered. They're going to respond to conflict more aggressively than someone whose characteristics are more mild-mannered and um, uh, diplomatic, okay? The setting is the shore of a river, and the theme then is that reward, the general theme is that rewards come to those who are patient, or patience pays off, right? Or patience is worth it. Patience is such an important thing. It's very difficult for us to have patience, especially these days. Now, I'm someone who's always struggled with patience. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I like to move very quickly when I do things, okay? <laughs> all right, I like to move quickly, I like to move fast, okay? That's just sort of my speed, that's, that's my MO, that's what I do, all right? I've always struggled with having patience, Right, because I'm everyone tends to move a little bit slower than I do um, because I do everything so quick. Right, so I've always struggled a bit with patience. I've had to learn and train myself to be a little bit more patient. In today's world, a lot of you are going to have more troubles with patience because you guys are growing up in a fully digital world. I did not grow up in a fully digital world. All right, so there was once upon a time where if I wanted to know something or do something, it took more than a quick Google search on my phone. These days, you guys can get, and let me, let me prove it to you. You visit a website. That website takes longer than five seconds to load. What do you do? Go to another, Go to another website. <laughs> or you start getting frustrated, right? <laughs> you're trying to publish. You're trying to, what, what social media platform do you guys mostly use if you do use social media? I don't have any social media. TikTok, yeah. right? Netflix. All right. Netflix. So I don't use TikTok very often. We'll do Netflix. So I don't use TikTok at all. But if you're trying to, do you ever have like buggy issues and load times? If that app starts to malfunction, what do you do? Exactly, exactly. We don't have any patience for anything anymore because we expect, shh, 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 because we expect results like this immediately. So that's something y'all are going to have to struggle with um, when you get older is learning that patience is still a very good virtue. And not everything comes immediately, right? So sometimes we have to slow down a little bit and be patient. Okay. All right. So what possibly might be another theme in this story about Zoe? We already said patience. What's another possible theme that could come? Because notice that, let's look at some of her actions. She sat quietly by the river and concentrated. If she's concentrating on what she's doing, that means she's being what? What? Focused. That's what we're looking for. Yes, focused or observant. So perhaps part of the theme could be being to pay attention to the details, be observant. When she slows down and focuses and is observant around the area around her, she's able to move to the right spot, wait, and catch her fish. You see? We all good on that? Yes. Okay. Um, next. Sorry, guys. I have less than 20. All right. Next. Um, so the story that we are going to read is another excerpt from a book, okay? So once again, it's one of those that we're going to sort of be dropped into the middle of the story. I actually want to teach you guys a new term today. Um, let me make sure. It's, it's not a term. It's not a word. It's, a, it's actually a phrase. Oh, this is just my phone. No. So uh, this, is, this is just this is a little something you guys can do uh, to show people that you're smart, okay? <laughs> this phrase right here, immediate race, okay? Do you know what this means? Of course not. It means basically that you are, um, it's a narrative technique where the story starts basically in the middle of the plot. You're dropped into the action. You guys ever watched a movie or something where the very first scene is like somebody like in like a chase or something like that? That's what that means. Yeah, that was the beginning of the end of uh, Infinity War. Yes, exactly. So basically when you do... Shh, shh, remember how we learned about a basic plot chart that does this, right? We learned about our exposition, conflict, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. The basic plot chart... Right? Well, this right here kind of throws that into a little bit of a, of, a, of a scramble. 
When you are dropped in in meteorites, it means that you're dropped into the middle of a plot as it's happening. Sometimes the movie or story will go back and do flashbacks. Sometimes you just learn about the plots or, or the events ahead, uh, the, ahead of time as the story progresses. Uh, so this isn't going to be on a test. I just wanted you to see this because that's basically what we have with these two stories that we're reading. So you under kind of can understand a little bit. Because again, if you guys recall from um, Escaping the Giant Wave, there was a question you had to answer, and it'll be on the test too, about um, how um, our mate Kyle's interactions with, what was the bully's name? Darren? What? Darren? About how, what, that actually described his interactions with him, right? Uh, at the beginning of the story, and how they were different by the end of the story. Remember that? So, um, we didn't see anything about the way that they interacted in the beginning of the story. We only knew about how they interacted through Kyle telling us. So we had to pay attention to those details. We didn't see an actual part of the story at the beginning of all this where the two of them are arguing, right? Because we're reading an excerpt. So again, something to keep in mind is when we're reading these pieces that are excerpts from larger books or larger stories, like Brian's Winter is a book, okay? We're reading a small portion of it, which means we're being dropped into the middle of the plot in Media Race, okay? Just wanted you guys to know that you can talk about that if you ever see that happening in a TV show or a movie and you're watching with your parents, you can point that out to them. Say, I'm smart, Mr. Tyson taught me that. Okay? I'm not All right, so, but um, the purpose, um, Brian's Winter, Brian's Winter is what we're going to be reading. Um, and the next, it's going to be about a boy who survives alone in the wilderness. Oh, I thought you said Brian's Twitter. Obviously, I didn't have that. Um, and we're going to about, um, um, it's Brian's Winter, shh, guys, see those mouths closed when I'm talking to you. Um, it's, uh, it's about a young boy surviving, um, in the wilderness by himself, which seems to be a pretty common theme in Gary Paulson's work, because that's exactly what Hatchet's about, too. Yeah, we watched the that. Yes, it's a very good book. Yes, it is. So, yeah, and so what I, yeah, you're right, it is. And so what I want you guys to do for me, what we're going to do first to kind of get us in the mindset for this, uh, for this story um, we're going to make a little chart. All right, we're going to make a little chart. And so I want you to do this on a piece of paper. Actually, no, we'll just do it with me. We'll do it orally. It'll be easy. Okay? So let's look at things like this. I'm going to write a big thing up here, surviving in the wild. All right? Surviving, surviving in the wild. All right, and our first chart is needs. I think, I think it is. And then Yes, it's going to rain later. Don't worry. All right. So surviving, shh, surviving in the wild. All right, guys. So let's talk a little bit about some things that you would need to survive in the wild. What's one absolutely critical thing you would need to survive in the wild, Layla? Oh yeah, water. All right. Now, how can one get water? Hold on, hold on. Listen. How can one get water that is safe to drink? Donovan. Boil the water. Boil water, exactly. Boiling water from where? Fire. Yes, my River dad. or a lake or a stream. Does anyone know how to eventually find water in the forest? Mm -hmm. If you're lost, how do you find water? Lake. How do you find that lake or stream? Uh, you hear it. How, let's say you don't hear it. <laughs> you're in the middle of the woods. How do you walk no, towards eight. water? What? Dig. Could dig. That, that's not, how, do you, how do you find a body of water in the woods? What? Follow an atlas. A lot of times, the easiest way is to walk downhill. All right? Walk downhill. Or if you can find a hollow. Does anyone know what a hollow is? In Alabama, we call them hollows. Uh, no, a hollow is like just a small valley. Uh, I don't know. I live, I live in an Appalachian region, okay? So I have plenty of hills to find water. All right? But basically, if you can find a hollow... And walk down, you'll eventually find a body of water somewhere. But then, yes, you've got to boil that water. It's important. 
because that water is going to probably have a lot of stuff in it that'll make you very sick. So you need water, how do you meet them? You gotta boil water from a source. And then you can drink it. Wait, so if the beer oh, yeah. goes up, you can boil that and drink it? Probably not that, sir. Uh, Alright, so what's another thing that you need in the wild? Uh, yeah, no, you're right. Um, tools. So, how, or let's, yeah, we, let's put that on there. Hold on. Tools. Like, does, does a weapon fall underneath tools? Yeah. So, how are you going to find that in the wild? So, you can't really find it, but you can find, like, rocks that have, like, rocks. Fashion them out right. Rock maples. That, um, yeah, maples. Fashion them yourselves? No, no. I'm looking. What's another really important thing you need, Devin? <laughs> okay, that's technically not wrong, but there's an abundant supply of it in the woods. So what's another thing that you would need, Colin? Food. Food, obviously. Because how do you get food in the wild? Follow hunting. The bear. Hunting is one thing. What's another thing you can do to get food in the wild? Fish. Follow a bear to see what berries are eating. Okay, you could possibly do that. The problem with that is that if you are close enough to see a bear, that bear knows where you are, <laughs> and um, because it can smell you and sense you, and there's a really good chance it's going to eat you. So, if you can follow a bear and see what berries it eats without getting killed, more power to you, but I'm going to stay away from bears. <laughs> Alright? Well, okay, let's hear it. Shelter and fire. Alright. Let's go ahead and write these down, but how else... Hold on. Wouldn't that be nice to have McDonald's in the woods, right? That should be an idea. Just go out in the middle of Appalachians, open up McDonald's, so more people get lost and just wait for people to find you, right? All right, so food, all right, sh all right, so we can hunt if we can find a way to do it. We can fish. We can, what else? What's another simple way, Michaela? Oh, I was going to tell you how to uh, do it. Uh, what you say? Oh, hold on, let's, let's finish talking about other ways we can get food. Uh, Johnson. Forage. forage, very good. Yeah, I know. I've been... To forage for food, it's like pick berries and greens and things like that. Become vegetarian, vegetarian to feed brown. That's kind of on foraging, but you know. Um, <laughs> well, that's fire. So we'll talk about that in a second. All right, Colin. Before you, okay. That's enough for you today, sir. All right, so. All right, so we've got water, tools, food, shelter. How are we making shelter? Austin, you start. Okay. Fallen tree. Fallen tree? Hoping, wish you fall down and got lots of hands. You could hope and wish that? <laughs> yeah. I know another need. I know another need. Um, no, 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 we're not doing needs. Hold on, we're, we're looking. How do we find shelter? So hold on. So we can possibly natural. find natural shelter, like a fallen tree. Sail around for a McDonald's. Shh, no more mention of McDonald's. Shelter. So we could say fallen tree. Cave, large rock. All right, what's something else we can do to have shelter? How else we get shelter, Layla? You can find a hole. We'll let that be under find natural shelter. Okay. John Austin. Make a lean to. Lean -to. Very good. I like that one. Plant some hollowed out trees. That's under finding one. Oh, if you have, uh, have a tent. If you had a tent with you, but let's assume that you don't. All right, all right. Kill a bunch of animals. What were you going to say? You can find a pile of rocks or a pile of dirt and just dig a hole in the dirt and use that as a shelter. Yeah. <laughs> find a natural. Okay, so we can find a natural shelter or we can construct a shelter, make a lean to, or use sticks uh, to build a shelter for us, okay? So we can do that. You can learn how to be a bird. Shh. I just buy one. Serious answer, please. All right, fire. How are we going to make fire out in the wilderness? Assuming we don't have anything. To make it with, you could pray for you could pray for that. What are you gonna say? 
All right, so we could, you know, possibly friction. Flint and stone. I know. Those are about the only two. What's one other way you can possibly make a fire? Be prepared before we go inside the wild or on the plane. That would be nice, but let's say that you got caught in the woods. Like wood. a human movie. You set it outside and light the fire. That would be nice, right? <laughs> you Possibly a magnifying. Can I have an umbrella and then when it rains, cool it. Okay. All right, so, shh, 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 shh. So, but here's what we've realized. What do we need to survive in the wild? Water, tools, food, shelter, and fire. We need all these things, right? I know. Wait, I have another one. No, we're done with this one, all right? So we got to move to this. Now, next one. Dangers that we could see out in the wild. Dangers, all right? So what is um, one danger that we could experience in the wild? Jack. Bear attack or animal attack? Wild animals? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we said animals, so we don't need any more mention of actual animals. So what are another one? Um, probably like mistaken chemicals. I mean, you think you just believe they probably poison ivy poison. Okay. All right. So let's call that um, <laughs> predatory nature, because things like poison ivy or poisonous berries that you mistake for good ones and eat them, or thorns, or um, God, sinkholes, quicksand, anything like that. I know my story. We went to the um, Well, hold on. Let's get to that in a second. Layla? Weather. That's a really good one. That's right. Weather. What's one more danger we could possibly find ourselves with in the wild? We could find ourselves in danger because this usually happens in the sport. There's a tall guy with a blunt hat just walking around. Landon. <laughs> I mean, in a movie, yeah, but in real life, no, it usually doesn't happen that way. Devin? Yeah, so, uh, well, I guess we could probably say just general nature, the danger of that. Okay, let's think, okay. These are all very creative and imaginative, which I love to hear. You have to make right? sure you don't get on the bad side of Bigfoot. But, but one more, uh, let's assume, the, the, what, what you guys are giving me, you're like, if this thing happens and then this thing happens in this perfect order, assuming this thing is happening, then this one. Right. Let's think more generally, okay? More generally. Not so much cause and effect, but just things out in nature shh, that could generally be a danger. Starvation. Starvation. Very good. One more. I'm looking for Landon? Nature. Nature. Animals. Dehydration. Yeah, let's actually, let's add to that. Dehydration. Let's just take general illness. Okay? Dehydration. Don't eat raw animals. Illness. All right, so let's start with, now we need to move through this a little quick because we got to move on. Uh, how do we avoid wild animal attacks? What should we do? What are the kind of things we can do? Uh, stay away from them. All right. That avo general avoidance. Now, assuming that we didn't have time to prepare. Okay. This has to be a serious answer. Okay. okay. When you're eating food, you have to be inside your shelter and close the doors. Okay. okay. Good. Staying inside your shelter. No. Especially when you're eating food because they can smell it. Yeah. We'll just say staying inside in general. Um, and, and just there'll be a host of reasons as to why you want to do that. What's another way? Um, no. Oh, Absolutely no. not. Because the grizzly bear can climb trees. Back away slow. Uh, just in, how do we avoid, what do we do in the end in, in, to, uh, um, to respond to the possibility of any animal attack? Again, think broadly, think generally. No? Okay. All right. All right. Hold on. Stop. Okay, listen. I like the goofy answers. They're fun. But, guys, I'm serious. Don't, at this point, we've got to do serious answers only. All right? You guys are smart enough, mature enough to know what I'm looking for. Okay? So, this is, I'm not trying to be a joy killer because I think they're funny, but that's, that's enough. Okay? Serious answers only from this point forward, please. Shut up. Okay. Um, what, I feel like that can fit to something else. Um, maybe, um, like staying on the move, 
or natural camouflage, things like that would work. Okay. Wait, I know another one. Hold on. Stay on the move. Hide. All right, and then one last thing before we move on to the other one. So what do we do in the event that we're cornered by an animal and we can't we can't get out of it? What could we do then? We crawl up into a ball and pray that we live. Potentially. All right, we're getting closer. Jack Rush is getting closer to the right thing to do, Dawson. Either act bigger or if all else fails, what are you going to have to do if you get attacked? Fight. Fight. Okay. <laughs> Good Lord, people. Okay. If you, find your, shh, if you find yourself backed up, perhaps you could use some of the tools that Liam brought up earlier to fashion some kind of self-defense self -defense weapon or something like that. Okay. So fight. Make weapon. If it's already made up its mind, it's going to eat you. Doesn't matter. So, you know, best you can do. All right. Uh, general nature, like just general dangers in nature, holes, uh, quicksand, poison ivy, thorns, uh, loose ground, rocks, uh, sinkholes, anything like that. How do we avoid those things? Yes, that would be great if we had access to them. But we're again, we're, we're in the wild. We have no access to these things. So how do you avoid these dangers? Not what do you do when they happen to you. How do you avoid them, F.A.? Study up on what herbs are important. Okay. You're not wrong. But we're in the wild. We're lost in the woods. Yeah, no, we did right. not have any time to prepare. We are talking about I'm lost in the woods and have to survive now, not... Go back in time and study up on this or make weapons or bring milk with you or weapon. Like, you're, you're in the woods. What do you do in order to avoid being hurt by nature in general? Be observant. Thank you. Be careful. Be careful. Be observant. Don't take risks, right? What I was going to say is pick the berry and feed it to an animal. If it dies... Be careful, be observant. Um, right, all right. Then about weather. How do we avoid bad weather? Oh, I thought I was going to Well, let's move on to weather because we got to move on. What do, what would, how, how do we avoid bad weather? What would we do? Get to cover. Get to cover, Layla? Yeah, get to your shelter, take cover. Um, what's another thing you like? Let's say it's too cold. Let's say that you... Um, let's say that you do have some level of survival skills. What's something that you can do that people especially used to do back in the day a lot to, like, say, stay warm if they were lost in the woods or something like that? Jack, right? Yes, if you had a trash bag. We're we don't have one of those. So, awesome. Thank you. Animal skins. All right, so weather is shelter. You could possibly wear animal skins. Are the animals still attached to them? Also, you have to skin have, it. Also, have yes, that's a, that's a neat idea. That's good. All right, and so I think we know how to avoid things like starvation, dehydration, and that's to drink water and eat food, right? If you're in the wild between water and food, which one's the most important one? Which one do you need first? Water. 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 Because you can survive without food for a very long time, but you cannot survive very long without water. You gotta have water. That dehydration will kill you like that. Okay? Okay. So that took a little bit longer than I wanted to, but that's okay. So, but it's important for us to understand these things because understanding, getting ourselves in the right mindset to understand what this story is gonna be about is gonna help us better extract some things. All right? Now, we've looked at this from a couple different perspectives. Obviously, one of the bigger things that we've all come to the conclusion on is that it's much better to be prepared, you know, because if you have a trash bag or milk or a flashlight or um, uh, uh, a weapon or a gun or something like that, then obviously it's going to be easier, right? So obviously we know that surviving in the wild is a little bit easier if you have some tools and stuff with you, okay? I thought it would be easier if you had an axe. Only an axe? Only an axe? Trees, all right, all right, all right, all right. So listen up, listen up, listen up, all right? So um, now, uh, so we're per so we've talked about theme. We've talked about themes being universal, which means what again? What does it mean for a theme to be universal? What does that mean again? Raise your hand. 
over time. It's applicable across cultures and time, right? Something written today will still, with a good theme to it, will still be applicable, will still be relatable in 500 years. Things that were written 500 to 1,000 years ago, still relatable, okay? Because those themes are universal. The human experience constantly changes and shifts, but there's in the center, the very center part of the human condition, the human experience. That means everything across time that humans have done, accomplished, thought, felt, there is something central to all of that that connects us together, okay? And that's why literature is so important. All right, we've talked about our story. We know what we're going to be looking at. We know we have an idea of what this story is going to be about, all right? We've talked about, you know, getting our, getting kind of ready for the uh, overall subject. So now, everybody close your book. And let's shift our focus to our vocabulary exercises. Okay? All right, all right, listen up. Listen up. All right, so vocabulary, so I'm going to do the same thing we usually do here. I'm going to read you uh, some sentences. I'm going to emphasize the vocabulary word, and then you will, raising your hand, raising your hand will answer the question, serious answers only, guys, okay? We need to move along, so no more joke answers, please, serious answers only, okay? Um, okay, so number one, we all listening, number one, what is your reaction to a person who is cocky? A cocky person. What would be your reaction to someone who is cocky? Do what? You feel like beating them at something, right? You want to fight them, maybe, or, or defeat them in some sort of challenge, right? If someone's walking around talking about how, you know, they're really cocky about their ability, it might encourage you to want to compete because it kind of gets on their nerves, right, when someone's cocky? Yeah, like, um, like, like, um, Right. All right. Uh, Liam's are obviously thought about this scenario before. Uh, but hey, not. But let's. Hey, oh, 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 we're all talking too much. All right. But um, what's another way? So, so one of the ways that you can respond to someone who is overly cocky is by perhaps challenging them, beating them, at whatever it is they're talking about. What's something else? What's another thing that we might? Another way we might respond to someone who is cocky. Okay, all right. So let's say challenge. Let's say cocky. Our first word. All right. So maybe just get mad, right? What else? What's another way? How else would you possibly react? Um, you can when you win. What you can do is um, hit them with a fist. That's Ashy. Serious answer. Come on, guys. Please. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to get. I don't want to get mad. I don't want to feel mad. I want to feel happy. Okay. So serious answers, please. Right. Final. Okay. So you might uh, call them out, right? You might call them out on their nonsense. That's fair. Would anybody maybe just be ignore them? No. Would you be? Do cocky people frustrate you? They annoy you, right? Yeah. Isn't it always nice to watch someone who's overly cocky like get beat at something? Yeah. <laughs> Does that, does that feel good sometimes? Every time we play against Collins. All right, number two. Number two, why sh, sh, would you move gingerly on gravel if you were barefoot? If you were barefoot. Would you move gingerly on gravel if you were barefoot? Right, very good. Would you? Yes, because the gravel is just a whole bunch of, it's just basically a whole bunch of rocks. Right. It could be a hard rock. Right. I just go around it. Just go around it? Let's say you couldn't go around it, you gotta walk. What do you bet you like? Yeah, it rests. So, uh, yeah, so obviously there's reasons why we would want to walk carefully. Anybody here spend a lot of time barefoot, got real tough feet, and can actually get across it without having to worry about it? You do? So would you walk gingerly across gravel? Or do you think you could just stomp right across it? I don't know. 
So gravel out there. We can go out there and take our shoes off and see who can step along us. No, I'm kidding. Um, okay. All right. Shh, 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 shh. All right. Have you ever, have you ever winced at someone who sang or played a wrong note? Have you ever winced when someone sings or plays a wrong note? Yes or no? Yes. Why, John Austin? Why? What caused you to do this? Yeah, bad note, right? What does it mean to wince? Someone show me what it looks like to wince. Yeah, like, eh, like just kind of like, almost like you see something, not it's not really terrifying, but like uncomfortable, right? Or unpleasant. Yeah, yeah you hear like somebody hit a really bad note, and you're just like, oh, that's, ooh, that's flat. Or just on my design. All right. Shh, 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 shh. Quiet down. So very good. All right, this one might be a little bit challenging. What might cause a terminal case of boredom? What might cause a terminal... Uh, that's what I'm asking you. I know what it is. What might cause a terminal case of boredom? College. College, okay. Uh, having to delete. Possibly. Okay, Kayla? Having to wake up. Having to wake up causes a terminal, like being alive causes a terminal <laughs> case of boredom for you? Like waking up, so, um, like for example, if you're like sleeping, having a good dream, yeah. and then you just come to and you're jumping in your bed, or just bothering you, or you have to wake up something. Maybe. Liam. Being, hey, Liam brings up a good one. Being grounded for almost a month. Now, how many people have gotten grounded for a long time and had different Three. things taken away from them and you were just found yourself to be bored? Do I? I've been, I've been grounded for the whole semester. Okay. So, right, yeah. So, if you don't have, like, if you're grounded, if you don't have access to your phone or your tablet or your game system or anything like that, right? What are you going to be doing? Just sitting in your room, staring at the wall? That might cause a terminal case of boredom. I read, I read, but I don't have to get bored. If you have an acquaintance, man, you can tell it's the end of the year because y'all are jittery. All right? Acquaintance. If you have an acquaintance with someone, what might you know about them? Pay attention to the word acquaintance. Okay? If you have an acquaintance with somebody, what might you know about them? What's something you might know about someone you have an acquaintance with? Um, like something they like me or... Uh, I know what it is. If you have an acquaintance, no, nope, put that down. Oh. If you have an acquaintance with somebody, uh, Michaela, I, I think that uh, maybe not entirely with that because I think acquaintance, let me make sure that the book defines you know it the same way that I do. You know a lot because technically they're your friend. Or right. Right, yeah, yeah, so an acquaintance, let's, let's give me another example, Landon. If you have an, if you don't have an acquaintance with somebody, what might you know about them? Okay, you might know their job, Henry. What? Okay, what else? Their job, Colin? Oh, wait. Maybe, maybe some of their hobbies, F.A. I read this computering on the dictionary. Um, it's like... Well, well, no, 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 don't tell me the definition. We don't want to know the definition yet. I want to know what you would know with someone who might have an... You, might you wouldn't know very much, but you'd know something. Be, give, me, give me an idea of something you would know with an acquaintance. Favorite color. Maybe, maybe that's, that's 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 fair. You might, Violet. Shh, Violet. Their name, obviously, correct, Liam. Um, maybe, maybe a slight background, Michaela. Yeah, that's better. Age, right? So, Devin. What? Maybe, maybe, Layla. Maybe, maybe. All right, I say maybe to all of this stuff. All right, eyes up here. Turn around. 
I say maybe to some of these things because the concept of an acquaintance is someone that you've met, someone that you know, not someone that you are enemies with or dislike, but they're not really a close friend, right? Just not someone that you know very well. So you might know, like for example, I've got plenty of people that I consider to be general acquaintances, people that I know that when I see them in public, I know their name, I know their kids' names, I know their spouse, what they do for a living, maybe a little bit of what they're interested in, right? But I don't really know anything deep about them. I don't know who they truly really are. Basically, being acquaintance with someone means that you kind of know, like, the surface information, okay? I know when you have been, when you have been, when, sorry, when, what was that? Okay, when have you ever been stymied, stymied by an assignment? Or have you ever been stymied by anything? Not in this time. Stymied, S-T-Y-M-I-E-D. By what? Yeah, you could be studying by a shotgun. Hey. Oh. Well, I asked about an assignment, but it can really kind of be anything. I know what it is. Um, I want to know the definition. I want to answer my question. When have you ever been stymied by a project or anything? Lennon. Um. Why, that would mean that the definition maybe makes you feel like there's an urgency here. Don't break your arm, I think. What's, what? When we had an essay in your class and I had to ask you because I didn't remember what we were supposed to do. Closer. Good. Okay. Mm, may it depends on what you were going to do. So to be stymied, well, let me hear what you got to say, Devin. How are you stymied by a midterm? Yeah. So to be stymied by something means to be prevented in doing something. It's an obstacle, right? So perhaps an assignment has stymied you, or stymied you from being able to go to the movies or go out with your friends or something like that. Turn around. Quiet down, guys. All right, we're almost done. All right, so this one should be pretty easy. How, okay, I'm going to just write some questions. Serious answers only. How would you retrieve... That way. I did. How would you retrieve a kite in a tree? What would you do to retrieve a kite in a tree, Colin? I would. This is a very simple answer. Don't overdo it. <laughs> Climb the tree. Thank you. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. All right, climb the tree and get it. What's another, what's another thing you could possibly do besides climbing it? What could you do? Grab a go car and smash it. Okay. Cat, Serious answer, FA. A cat or a kite? Hmm. Get your mom to come sit here. A cat or a kite? Kite. <laughs> I guess the method would be the same, though. Yeah, shake the tree or something like that, right? I was going to say shake the tree. Okay, so you could do the string drop. I have used that technique many, many times, actually. It works wonders. Okay, but yeah, we get that. All right, last one. Name me one object, one object that you think smells rank. Dumpsters. Dumpsters? <laughs> Yeah. When, Ethan brings <laughs> when Ethan brings boiled eggs to school. I have never experienced this. Is it that bad? Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's right. It's right. He farts a lot. Right. You saying John Austin smells right? Yeah. That's rude. Uh, that's Liam? I, I live very near. I live very close to a chicken plant. Ooh. Every time in the morning, it's like, ooh. Yeah, chicken, chicken plants smell terrible. Oh, wait, wait, wait. My dog is close to dying, so whenever I go out, he smells so Yeah, dry. yeah, I, I imagine that. Uh, a dump yard. A dump yard, yeah? Um, when someone in my family picks chitlins. Chitlins? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it stinks? You don't like it? The sewer? Yeah, very good. You don't like coffee? You think coffee smells right? Makes me throw one. Makes me like queen. Love the smell of coffee. Jack Rush. What? What do you think I'm next? <laughs> 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 All right. 
All right, that's enough. Sorry you didn't pay your family your eggs, no bad. You know this video is for him, right? So like he's gonna All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. So what time is it? It's uh we got about ten minutes left in class. Well about eleven, twelve minutes left in class. I already did the homework. Well I knew we were gonna ask for it, so I did it every, the whole time of your thing. Well then in that case we're not gonna do our vocabulary homework. Yeah! I'm kidding. Um, of course we're going to do it. Yes! All right, so, um, but listen, 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 listen. So you guys know, turn over now to page 366. So you have, we're not going to go over this part right here together, but you have um, another little thing that you can read that kind of gives you ideas of the definitions. All right, so what I want you to do this time, very similar, very similar to, you know, your last assignments. I want you to write the words, I want you to write the definitions, and then I want you to write... <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> then I want you to write one sentence of your choice using the word correctly, and then I want you to write one complex <laughs> sentence no. using the word correctly. So you're going to write two sentences per word. Hold on. Hands down. Give me one second. I'll answer your question in a second. So I'm going to reiterate real quick. Words and definitions. One sentence using the word correctly in however form you want to write it. All right? As long as it's a complete sentence with capital A, capitalization and proper punctuation. And then the second one, I want you to write one complex sentence sentence using that vocabulary word correctly. Your sentences may not be identical. Don't write your sentence and then just add a dependent clause to the sentence you wrote first. Two separate sentences. Now, Layla, what was your question? What if you forgot to stop sentence? Then you would ask me and I would remind you. A complex sentence is a... Who, who can tell me? Who actually can tell me what a complex sentence is? A dependent clause and an independent clause. Bingo. If I had candy, I'd give it to you. A uh, dependent clause and an independent clause together. Remember, if your dependent clause comes at the beginning of your sentence, because I was late for school, you have to have a comma. Comma, Mr. Proper sent me to detention. I don't know. So, like, Sit down. so like this, the crossing man went to the gym, how much to get stuff? No, that's just a fragment. Um, you wouldn't put a comma after that because to get what? To get buff? That's a prepositional phrase. Complex. No, it's not. Because to get buff is a prepositional phrase, not a dependent clause. So remind me what it is that every single clause, whether dependent or independent, must have inside of it. Object. For a clause to be a clause, it has to have what two factors? Subject and a verb, right? So because I was late for school, comma, Mr. Proper sent me to detention. Because I was late for school is your dependent clause. It's not a complete sentence. It starts with your subordinating conjunction, and therefore you need more words to add to it. So remember, if you have a dependent clause at the beginning of your sentence, comma after the dependent clause, but you don't necessarily have to put a comma um, before it if it comes at the end of your sentence. Mr. Proper sent me to detention because I was late for school. You don't need a comma there. But if you say, because I was late for school, Mr. Proper sent me to detention, you need a comma between your clauses. Just try. All right, just try. Um, so all the words, definitions, two sentences, one sentence using the word correctly, and however you want to write it, one word, one sentence uh, as a complex sentence. Make sure that you are capitalizing your sentences. Make sure that you are using punctuation. Make sure that you are writing complete sentences. Subjects, verbs, objects, complete thoughts. All right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Violet. Yes. All right. Any other questions about what we talked about today? All right. So listen, it's Thursday. Um, this is your only assignment. You guys should be able to knock this out pretty quickly. It'll be due Monday. All right. Tomorrow in writing lab, your if you did not turn in your last, your uh, extra scene uh, to Escaping the Giant Wave project, then that will be due tomorrow in writing lab. Okay. So make sure you have that then. Remember, guys, we are just a couple weeks away from the end of the year. So every point matters. So don't miss any assignments, especially if you're not thrilled about what your grade looks like. Don't miss any assignments, all right? On Monday, on Monday, we will begin uh, reading Brian's Winter. We will probably finish it, okay? 
We will, and then we will spend uh, Thursday and Friday of next week reviewing, and then the week of the field day that following Monday, we will have a test, and then we will be done. Aside from our review, okay. All right, so don't forget your homework tomorrow for a writing lab. Otherwise, you may have the last few minutes of class to work on your homework uh, vocabulary assignment, okay? Any questions for me at all? Everybody good? Yes. Assume that it is a...